Okay, first up, uh, I'm going to do my little bit, which is go to adafruit.com slash gift certificates because it's probably too late to get that gift. Get a gift certificate. It works. They never expire. We don't do anything weird. We don't harvest the email. We don't spam the person getting it. Um, you can print out. We have, like, a printout that you can do. Um, get a gift certificate from Adafruit. It's great. Adafruit.com slash gift certificates. <laughs> You're really selling it there. <laughs> well, it is. It is. It's just like, what should I do? And a lot of people are like, what do, what do I get someone who likes electronic stuff? It's like, get them a gift certificate from Adafruit. Yeah. Um, let's uh, kick off the new products. What's this? Okay, we've got a felt carrying case. So this is, I think, designed for either a book or a keyboard. But you know what it fits really well? The uh, Raspberry Pi 400. Um, if you have a Pi 400, uh, you know, you want to keep it safe while you're moving it uh, to and from school or a workshop. Um, we have a zipper case, but this felt case was inexpensive um, and works very well. It has um, a little uh, a, a flexi strap piece and uh, some nice felt um, that is, you know, it's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. It's a nice It's nice and padded. It will keep your keyboard or your uh, Raspberry Pi 400 nice and safe. Next up. We've got another Molex power cable pair. So you get a socket and a plug uh, and they plug together. And I think altogether it's uh, 20 centimeters, 10 centimeters each. This one has um, eight connectors. And, uh, you know, they just match up. You have, you know, red on one side, red on the other, pink, pink, yellow, yellow. Um, great whenever you have something that needs, you know, a little bit of current, a little bit of power, uh, and you want nice um, free-hanging connectivity. I like these super fine pitches, 1.25 millimeter pitch. Yeah, these are nice. Okay, and then next up we have a tour of boards that are somewhat uh, related to each other, sort of, kind of. They're up, all similar, but they're not the same. So this is the ESP32... S3 dev board um, with eight megabytes of flash. And I can't remember how much PS RAM. Yeah. Um, Let me check the product page. I think eight, sorry, eight megabytes of flash, eight megabytes of PS RAM. So this is the most you can get with the S3. You get two USB ports, one native, one reprogramming, um, plugs into your breadboard or, or whatnot. And um, it's just a very powerful S3 board. The S3 is very new. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, it's, uh, we're adding CircuitPython support. I think our Arduino support isn't there as of this video, but it might come in over the next few weeks. Yeah. Okay. So that's the S3. It's the next biggest dev board. Up. Now this is a C3 dev board. The USB32 C3 is, um, a RISC-V chip. And so it has a lot fewer pins. Uh, I will, I will warn you about that. This does have eight megabytes of flash, no PS RAM. Um, the C3 does have Arduino support and ESP IDF. I don't know that it's supported in CircuitPython. I don't think it's supported in uh, MicroPython either. Um, we're not really planning on adding CircuitPython support, but uh, there is Arduino support and it's RISC-V. If you want to play with RISC-V, um, this is kind of a great way to do so because you get like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, with it. It's got the little USB serial uploading and debugging port and you get a couple GPIO pins. Again, not a lot of GPIO pins, um, but nothing you can start experimenting, and of course it's got wireless as well. All right, and then this is a giant t-shirt sized one that uh, you know. actually wear. It looks like yeah. a t-shirt, but this is the, the no, uh, ESP32 Warum DA. The DA stands for dual antenna. Um, so this is an ESP32 uh, Warum. So it's the, um, not the S2, it doesn't have native USB. It's like this classic ESP32. But it's two antennas and it has the antenna selector built in already. So um, what it's designed for is to always get good antenna performance, even if your normal PCB antenna isn't aligned um, with the source. Because, you know, one antenna, if the signal happens to be perpendicular to it, um, you're going to get very low signal strength. But if you have two antennas, you'll be perpendicular to one, you're going to be right in line with the other. So you're going to get... Um, really good signal strength. It's gonna, you're going to have a much better time, and it's, it's basically for free. You just have two antennas and a little selector, so it's a very inexpensive way to double the chances of having a good signal strength for your ESP32. It does have this funky shape, though, um, so just you'll watch out that your PCB layout uh, will work with this design, um, but I think the antenna switchover is probably done transparently for you, so you can just treat it like an ESP32. Uh, and get better signal strength for free. Okay, and then the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, 
our community, our customers, and everyone hanging out is... Burr, 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 burr. Yes, it's finally here, another Cutie Pie, the third in our Cutie Pie family, yeah. the ESP32 S2 Cutie Pie, which brings some so much stuff this week. This is the ESP32 S2, which is a single core Tensilica Wi-Fi processor. Um, it's a lot like the ESP32, but it doesn't need a USB to serial converter chip, which means we can make it so small that it fits in uh, something that's like smaller this than a quarter. This is the tiniest board ever. It's so small. Um, so there's an ESP32 S2. There is a USB Type-C connector for uh, uploading and powering. There's a Stemic UT port, so you can plug and play, add I squared C sensors. It's got um, 13 GPIO total, 11 on pads, and... Um, it's so small we have to force the overhead to refocus. I know, it just it The not. overhead is shocked. Okay. Um, How is it so small? It's so small. So you've got uh, analog, I think almost every one of these pins has analog, um, but there's like four dedicated analog here, two pins that are labeled for I2C, there's a second I2C port on the STEMIC UT, so you've got like another two pins. Um, hardware UART, hardware SPI pins on the high speed SPI port, uh, which means that these three pins cannot do analog. They're the only three pins that don't because the high speed SPI is worth it. It's, it's amazing. It's like, you know, some ridiculous megahertz, like 60 or 80 megahertz. Um, so to connect to TFTs or, or some devices, um, very, very high speed. You've got the boot button and the reset button. Uh, the boot button can also be used as a user button. There's a regulator, there's a little NeoPixel, um, right here that glows rainbow or whatever you can use it for signaling uh, there's a ceramic antenna on the top and on the bottom uh, you've got the esp32 s2 chip uh, with the crystals and passes a lot of 0402s the antenna goes out here uh, and here is two more pads for battery input and this is diode protected so you can have you know, that the, we're using the C Chow pinout and they kind of decided that the five volt line was output, not input. And so you'd have to use a diode and whatever. But basically, if you want to connect a battery up, you can connect to these two pads and they're battery protect, they're diode protected. So you, when you plug in USB, you're not going to damage the USB or the, the battery um, from that. And it's got castellated pads and it's super small and uh, you can use it with Arduino or CircuitPython. It's got four megabytes of flash and two megabytes of PS RAM. So I was waiting to release this until I could get the chips that had the PS RAM because that two megabytes of PS RAM is and so it's handy. it's Wi-Fi, this is amazing. So tiny. And it's and so Wi-Fi. Wi okay. And um, yeah. it's in stock now. I even put in a little bit right before the show to yeah, make sure we had some. Okay. So pick some up. Um, and that's, uh, that's no problem. <laughs>